Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, This is a uh, podcast coming at you on May 29th in the height of a whole bunch of news, both COVID, uh, cities burning, lots to talk about. Uh, My name is Jason McPhee. I'll be your host today. And with me on your upper left, we have Leon Brithwaite. He's a uh, former uh, engineer from the state of California. And uh, on your right of your screen is Tim Everett, our Screaming Eagle of Freedom. Uh, He's a uh, pilot in the state of California. And uh, and we'll jump right into things from there. Uh, So, uh, of course, the top of the news right now, Minneapolis is burning. Um, yeah. uh, it's almost like the city is being sacked and pillaged by Vikings almost. But uh, the uh, uh, it's all occurring because of police action. And so yeah. essentially, uh, uh, George uh, Floyd, um, he was a, a man who was uh, suspected of forgery. Uh, he was pinned down to the ground by a cop uh, with handcuffs <clears throat> on. Uh, the cop had his knee on his throat as he was um, trying to, I guess, uh, restrain him. And uh, he was had his knee kept on his throat for all of six minutes while he was uh, complaining that he couldn't breathe. And bystanders are standing around with the video going on also claiming, hey, this guy can't breathe. You need to get off him. And the cop kept his knee on the guy's throat until the guy actually died. Uh, and so at this point, the, you know, it's turned into a, a huge riot situation in the city. And, um, of course, this George Floyd uh, issue is also re- uh, reminiscent of the Eric Garner issue that happened in New York quite a while ago with the uh, loose cigarettes. I can't breathe. 2014. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. Okay. Well, the yeah, you know, city's burning. You guys have any burning thoughts on this? Uh, Leon, you, you want to jump in on that? Well, you know... Normally, I would give I give the police the benefit of the doubt because of the inherent danger of their jobs. But in this particular case, in this particular case, I cannot find a single reason that will justify the action or the conduct of this police officer who put his knee on this man's <laughs> neck for six, seven minutes. The man lay there dying, and there are about three other officers sitting around and watching this and do nothing about it. So this man and the people who watch it should be charged and charged with murder. It just came across the news that uh, recently that um, uh, the officer who had his knee on, on, um, on George Floyd's neck he was arrested and he was charged with both murder and manslaughter. I do not know all the details. It just came across before I came on air. But whenever agents of the state, and I'm using the state in the broad in the broad sense here, whenever agents of the state take adverse actions against private citizens, we have to be very careful because the next thing they could be coming for us. We have to be very, very careful. We must monitor this action. We must investigate these adverse actions. In this case, it looks bad. Whatever we have seen so far, it looks really, really bad. And I want this man prosecuted, and the other officers also prosecuted, and I hope and I pray go to prison for a very long time because people who act in in the name of the government or in my name, really and truly, should never be doing this. Uh, Leon, do you think that murder is uh, it should be the charge in this case instead of manslaughter. My, my understanding is that, and I'm no lawyer, so so take this with a grain of salt, but my understanding is that murder requires the uh, uh, a, a pre-planned aspect of it. In other words, the, the person ahead of time wanted to kill the, the other person, whereas <clears throat> manslaughter uh, can encompass these kinds of kind of like um, things related to a, a sudden uh, emotional urge, like uh, you're minding your own business, you come home, you see your wife with another man in bed and you, you kill one or two or one or both of them. 
uh, or this. I thought you were going to move on to three there, too. <laughs> yeah, one or two or three. <laughs> yeah, one or two. Well, well, you can kill yourself, too, but then there would be a requirement for a charge for anyone. Else. I just so, wasn't sure how many people were involved. Yeah, oh, oh. yeah come to think of it, that's true. Right? Yeah, really, you know, really. We just but, did the Tiger King not too long ago. So, yeah, yeah, who knows? Right. Maybe, maybe yeah, that's yeah. over from the Tiger King. Uh -huh, but yeah, to answer, I, um, to answer yeah, Tim's question, are you, are you done yeah. with the question, Tim? Yeah, so that's it. it should okay. it be murder or should, should, in your mind, do you think it's, it's more uh, prudent for the authorities to go after them for a man's slaughter conviction? Because I think they wouldn't be able, I personally have heard in, in previous cases that they wouldn't be able to make a murder charge stick. It would have to be something along the manslaughter line. What do you think okay. of that? I don't, okay, that's a valid point, but I, and I don't know um, in, in the state of Minnesota how, how they define first degree murder versus second degree murder, murder versus third degree murder. Okay. Now, first degree murder, you're right, requires intent. And I don't think you can, you can make the case for intent in this case because, of course, the officer didn't know this man and there was nothing, there's nothing connecting them except the fact that he was trying to arrest the man, supposedly. However, if there is something like a second degree murder where intent is not required, but where your actions cause the death of another human being, which is what happened here, which I think may be second degree murder, I think that could be charged. Or if not, well, then yes, maybe a manslaughter charge if, if, if there's some distinction in the law between a second degree murder and manslaughter. But something along those lines, it has to yeah. be something that does not require intent, I think, okay. that you will okay. have to charge him with. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, as a, uh, uh, in all these kinds of situations where you've got someone out uh, doing something in the course of their job and this kind of thing happens, I, I think about my job as a pilot. For example, if I came in to a, um, to the ramp area and uh, somehow, maybe uh, recklessly, for example, I was going taxiing too fast and I lost, I uh, started to brake and lost the um, one of the brakes and veered off the taxiway line and ran into some poor soul and, you know, God willing, this wouldn't happen, but, and killed them. Oh boy. Uh, I would uh, I would be in deep deep trouble for for that you know mainly sure. you know people say it was taxing X yeah you know, there there would be hell to pay for me or for example if I busted an altitude on an I because we we fly under air traffic control for the most part so if I busted an altitude was too high too low and required the um, maneuvering of another aircraft you know I could very likely stand to lose my uh, pilot certificate over that and my job and everything else. I mean, it doesn't take much in our business to uh, anything less than perfection can lead to the loss of, of our um, ability to continue doing it, you know, because they, they figure you're a hazard. And, uh, you know, well, Tim, so I think anyway, I think where the gray area is going to come in on this is it. With the situation you're describing in your job, it sounds like it's probably a more immediate decision, whereas this guy, there was about a six-minute period where people are mm. continuing to warn. I mean, I guess if you had people say, Tim, turn the plane, Tim, turn the plane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and you just kept yeah. going straight. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So that's, check, uh, check altitude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, Air traffic control, they hint like that now and again. But um, yeah, so, uh, but, but this, this whole idea is, uh, ah. anyway, um, it's extremely unfortunate. The, the people involved, and, and I think Leon's correct uh, that all four of them are culpable in this. Just like when, when you're the getaway car driver and your three friends, like what happened can't remember the state, but some homeowner had an AR-15 and was able to defend the 
the property. They they were there to do harm. They had weapons, and he killed all three of the burglars. Well, the gal in the getaway car, guess guess who's getting getting charged for tr a triple murder? Is the gal in the getaway car, right? So, like Leon says, these other guys standing around, and we lost Leon. These uh -oh. uh, other guys uh, standing around need to um, to have their day in court as well and to plead their case one way or the other, and we'll see what happens. But that doesn't address the other issue. And here we are with um, uh, Minnesota burning, and, you know, that's a separate issue, though. I, I understand the Well, well hold on. Before you get to that, before yeah. you get to that, let me just jump in real quick while we're waiting for Leon to get back in. And uh, okay mentioned that we will be taking comments. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the show, but uh, oh. we'll have an email address. Uh, it should be uh, wherever you've, it's coming by on the bottom right now. And um, it should be uh, um, <clears throat> uh, available to wherever you're linking to this from. Uh, but if you would like to send a comment uh, at the end of the show, we'll try and go through those comments in sort of an overtime. Uh, so roughly about a half hour into the show, we'll break for, for comments. And uh, at that point, we'll try and address those and maybe uh, give a few additional thoughts that we didn't have time for during the show. Um, also, too, uh, one thing I wanted to mention as well, um, with all of this uh, COVID uh, actions that the government is taking that may be impacting your job or business, um, there's so many people whose lives have been impacted by these government actions. And so if you have a story that you'd like to share uh, with us on air, uh, we'd be more than happy to review it and, and potentially discuss it with you on air. Uh, but uh, if you could send that story as well to the email below, uh, we'll try and take a look at it. And uh, we'd, we'd love to share your story with you, you know, um, uh, if, if, if uh, we have enough detail on it. So uh, anyways, uh, getting back to that, uh, Tim, M uh, Minneapolis burning. Uh, do you want to yeah, jump yeah. back on that? Yeah, you know, I understand the, the frustration involved. And I think some of this may have to do with uh, what's going on with the COVID thing and people being out of work um, that uh, add, added to the, uh, you know, where people went over the breaking point and started uh, doing crime, essentially, is what they're doing. And, uh, you know, libertarian or not, there's... Uh, there's no uh, tolerance of, uh, especially with libertarians, where we're, you know, uh, do do no harm uh, is is our motto in a sense, and uh, um, the this is uh, definitely harming uh, innocent people. It had nothing to do with uh, this crime of uh, that the police officer did upon uh, the victim in in this case. So. So, uh, so people completely innocent are now being uh, having their uh, businesses destroyed and and ransacked and so on, and um, <clears throat> so that you know this is just plain wrong and you know I, it has to be dealt with one way or the other and that's all I have to say about that really. Yeah, no, that, that's uh, one of the key issues with any kind of a riot. Uh, you know, it seems like there's there's definitely a case to be made for a strong discussion about, um, you know, if a government uh, does some action to wrong you or another person you know, and <clears throat> that, uh, that uh, you know, action does severe harm, then it certainly seems reasonable uh, for you to uh, vent some rage toward the government. Uh, however, the idea that somebody would just turn around toward their neighbor and throw a stone at them is just absolutely, uh, you know, despicable and uncivil. I, I, it's just hard to, you know, imagine what would lead somebody to believe that's okay to, to turn toward somebody they don't know and do damage to them, you know, out mm -hmm. of out of rage. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and uh, uh, the racial aspect of it, I, I assume, uh, not. Uh, I try to avoid the news as much as I can, but, uh, and now here we have James. Oh, wow. I was going to join in, but yeah. it looks like Leon and, is uh, but, trying to get uh, back in. Yeah. Okay. And what else, what else can, can I say? It violates the non-aggression principle. Well, hold on a second. So let me, let me uh, introduce. So James, just you're our, uh, you're, you're running the background stuff for us today. So thank you for that. Yeah. And you're also, 
Oh, well, James, did you want to tell you you're running for office? So you want to, you want to uh, let everybody know well, about your I'm, campaign? Yeah, I'm, I'm not here to know about the campaign. My, I was actually going to talk. My son is currently actually in Minneapolis. He lives in Minneapolis. He was just down the street. We was trying to get in this studio. I was going to kind of fill in his spot while we were, while we were waiting. But my son actually lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he lives down the street. He went down to the the whole Target, the Auto Zone. We have some pictures if you guys want to go to my Facebook page, it, my personal Facebook page. They posted a lot of pictures on there, and you know one of the things we all think that we all don't understand about how do people get to this point where they burn down their own neighborhood, and I think the fact that we don't understand it is what we need to think about hmm. because we all can get to that point where it, for whatever reason, as much sense as it doesn't make, where we are pushed to the point where it feels so powerless, where you take the only power you have. And if the only power you have is to send the message that, look, we're so upset that we're literally gonna burn our neighborhood down because we've tried voting, we've tried yelling, we've tried arguing, we've tried protesting, and nothing has worked. This is literally all we have left. And I think it's that desperation that we should be more uh, cognizant of. That's kind mm -hmm. of- yeah. But now Leon's back. You guys don't need me anymore. And so <laughs> I'm going to leave you on that somber note. Oh, wait. Nope. Leon doesn't seem to have any sound. Yeah. No sound. <laughs> no sound, Leon. And the technical days of COVID, right? It's everything <laughs> a technical issue. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't have your no. script in front of me, so I just have to gonna have, react to what you guys are talking about. So. Well, you know, you know, one other thing I wanted to to just touch bases on on the whole Minneapolis thing before we move on as well is the uh, just just to drive home the fact that whenever there's a law now that this particular law, you know, I mean, the guy apparently was guilty of or at least charged with forgery. So, I mean, that's, you know, fraud is something real. But but as far as, as that goes, whenever you do have a law that is enforced at the end at the point of a gun by force, whatever. And, and uh, you know, we saw with Eric Garner, you know, a similar situation in New York, you know, years ago where, you know, he was simply selling loose cigarettes. Uh, you know, cops wrestled him to the ground for selling loose cigarettes and pinned him to the ground. He said he couldn't breathe and he died, you know, and you've got to wonder, you know, sometimes whether these, uh, uh, you know, they, you know, w w it just drives home the, point I think every libertarian and every every citizen should take seriously and that's that if if you want a law understand that that law better be worth using force on in the end certainly in the case of Eric Gardner you know that, that was just unbelievable unbelievably sad and in this case too you know obviously it's a it's a bad situation although you know fraud certainly is a as is, is, you know not selling loose cigarettes so well we um, saw the case of uh, Philadelphia police dragging a guy off of the off of a train, off of a, <laughs> yeah. a bus for, for not social distancing. And, you know, that could have gone sideways very easily, yeah. right? It's yeah. these kind of things can go real sideways. All right. Can we hear you, Leon? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, we right. got you. Yeah. You guys got Leon back and I'm going to go back into yeah. the background. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. Thanks for your input, James. Uh, yeah. My, my, gotcha. my, my, apol my apologies. I don't want them to be internet to just conk out on me. You're not you're not broadcasting out of Minneapolis, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am, and I didn't tell you guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow. Well, we we're kind of wrapping up the Minneapolis. Do you have any last thoughts on the uh, thing before we move into a little bit of COVID-related you know, stories? The, the, the only thing I would say is that that sure, I want I want these police officers prosecuted and all that. But it does not justify this rioting and this arson and this looting that is going on. I don't care about all this thing about people talking about, oh, this oppression and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff and things like that. We have, we cannot allow vigilante justice in this country because then I could choose what I want to do to who I want to do if that is the case. So if these police officers are to go through the system, they are to be prosecuted, I want that then these people better stop this rioting and this looting and this damn nonsense because they should be prosecuted too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, last thought. Did, did you, Leon, did you hear James? Uh, he had a, a question regarding that, which is basically, and Jason, maybe you could fix this if, if I get it wrong, but, you know, why is it that they're 
they're actually so upset that they have resorted to this where they're burning their own neighborhood down essentially why you know, is is their situation so bad what prompts them to do this because the thought is that if they're prompted to do it being human beings you know it could happen to any of us and so is that about it jason or did i miss that? I, I, I think it was something uh, to that effect you know i i have just a well i got let leon respond i had a little bit of uh, no, go um, ahead. It's I okay. Was... I'll hear what you have to say. It's fine. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, you know, it, this is one thing, too, that uh, sort of coming from a libertarian perspective, this kind of disturbs me. Whenever I hear, uh, I guess, you know, it, it's tempting to do, but when you hear people try to categorize us onto teams of one sort or another, and, you know, I mean, yes. certainly we see team red and blue, you know, team black and white or, yes. you know, any other color, you know, heterosexual, gay, whatever it Man is. Man and woman, straight, yeah. and, straight, and, straight and, and, and gay and everything else. Exactly. And I mean, I think it, that's, that's a lot of what's feeding into this type of I, ideas about writing and stuff, you know, because I mean, even just the language, you know, they're burning down their own neighborhood. And I mean, I, I think about it and I think... You know, well, this isn't, you know, I mean, to, to consider it a black neighborhood or a white neighborhood. I mean, I, this is a bunch of individuals who live in this neighborhood. And I, you know, exactly. I think we've really got to start trying to, to, I guess, readjust our vision to, to see each other as individuals and not as part of teams or we're never going to get out of this spiral. Uh, you know, just, that, that, is such, that is such a very good point, okay? Since I was a child, I heard the speech, I have a dream that of Dr. Martin Luther King. And he said that we should live in a nation where we are judged, not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. So I don't care whether you're white or you're black or whatever you are, or whether you're gay or you're straight or you're man or woman. What I care about is the content of your character. So yes, that police officer in Minneapolis did an awful thing and he, the people who sit on, sat down and watch it, they did an awful thing also. Let the process work. There's no reason to go burn anybody's property down. It's not your property. People work yeah. hard to put that there. So and, let the process work. Let's and, judge as, by the content of their character. And, and as though somehow Target or some other poor business owner is on the wrong team, you know, or anything exactly. else. In fact, I even heard stories of people putting up uh, notes and windows saying, we are a black owned business. And, I, you know, I, mean, I, I just can't think of anything more sad but than to see that we're, you know, trying to put ourselves into these bins just to survive the, the story. Sure. Yes. And this is exactly what happened in um, in Baltimore when we had the um, the riots in Baltimore because of a, a a police shooting. I believe that was Freddie Gray. No, that was not a shooting, but he died in police custody. The same thing happened. People were rioting and everything and stuff like that. So people were still putting up those very signs. Oh, we are black owned business to 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 escape the the, the rioting and the arson. This is illegal conduct. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Even if you think it's justified in your head, it's illegal. You're burning down other people's property. You're damaging other people's property. That's illegal in this country. So I don't know where these justifications come from. But you know, it probably goes back to the political, the, the identity politics that the Democratic Party play all along. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to Joe, to, um, to Joe Biden's comment and his, character, his categorization of us who don't stay on the Democratic plantation. It has to, yeah, we'll, to do with that, and we'll talk about it. We'll jump to that. I, I was hoping to get to one other. Well, you know what? Let's, let's go straight to that, because we're starting to run short on time. I, I'd wanted to get to the uh, um, uh, proclamation of uh, Trump about, uh, you know, churches being essential and uh, other uh, uh, things that, you know, government is just willy nilly decreeing, I guess, <laughs> as far as what is and isn't essential. But uh, I'm not sure, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time on this. And this this last uh, uh, quote that you're talking about, about Biden's really plays into the whole thing. And so, uh, essentially, one of the things we're trying to uh, run on the show as we go forward is to have something called the Knucklehead Noise Patrol. And so we're looking for just one outrageous quote every week from somebody. And, sure. and of course, to take the case this week was Joe Biden, where he had said in an interview um, with a black journalist on television, uh, he had said to him uh, at the end of the interview, um, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. So. 
uh, just and, and of course that's been making the rounds for about a week now and then you know you add in the Minnesota thing where it appears to be a you know told as a black and white story you know in the media it, you know you can't help but escape the connection maybe uh, do either guys have any thoughts about Joe Biden's uh, latest gaffe? Well, well Joe, Joe Biden have had a series of gaffes and this this one is nothing new and and some of them are quite racist actually if you really look at it and listen to what he has said and this one fits in the category of a gaffe and a racist and a racist comment. Now you want to tell me that just because I don't support the Democratic Party, I ain't black? Wow. <laughs> how, how, did that, how did that happen? When did Joe Biden become the, 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 the arbiter of who's black or not in America? But you see, this all goes back to that whole concept that you're only, you're only black if you're on the Democratic plantation. You have to be on their plantation to be black. This is the massive mentality that is destroying the black community here in, here in the United States. Look at the inner cities which are run by the Democrats and look at the condition and probably some of this tied into Minnesota also. And look at the condition of black and brown people living under democratic rule in these cities. It is disgusting. It is horrible. It's a national disgrace. And Joe Biden have the gall to sit on TV and tell me I'm not black because I don't support he and his, he and his liberal godforsaken God policies. I was going to say something else. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be more gentler. Excuse me. Sorry. Go ahead. And once again, I can't follow uh, Leon's. Leon's just just nails everything so uh, hard and and firm into the ground. I can't do anything. Uh, I can't say anything behind it. I mean, it's already been said. Wish I had more, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Thank you.